and I'm one of the K-8 PD specialists here at Catherine Blaine K-8, and I'm starting my 23rd year of teaching. Thank you all for being here to celebrate this community action and 2020 Legacy Masterpiece project called The Healing Mural, Stories and Art with Hiawatha D. This work replaces the 2004 mural, also created by Hiawatha D, along with Blaine's student. That time he volunteered his time and talent, and this time we wanted to bring him back to commission this beautiful legacy piece. It's been almost a year in the making, and through time, and through a pandemic, and the uprising for Black Lives. But this is so much more than a mural. There are many people to thank. I would like to thank the Catherine Blaine staff, our administrators, Ryan Ladage and Patrick Gray, our teacher co-leaders of our race and equity team here, our building site, Berna Cristobal and Rachel Shine. Thank you for your leadership. Our PTA has been instrumental in their support of this project. Thank you so much, Trish Cavanaugh Lambert and Sarah Broman. I also want to thank Sarah Olson, alumni of PTA. We've all come together. This has truly been a partnership of Blaine family and community. I want to thank my own children, Sally and AJ Holloman. Thank you, Jessica Keller, for being here today from the Magnolia News and for your support. This week in my virtual classes, I told the story of the beginning of this work and the vision to bring us to this moment today. We're so excited. I would like to introduce now Susie Goulart, our middle school art specialist and Lane parent. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am honored to be here today to celebrate the healing mural that Hiawatha D has created in our school. As you'll see shortly, this mural is not only aesthetically beautiful, but it also tells a powerful and poignant message. It speaks to the rich legacy of Black families who were at Blaine in the past, who are at Blaine presently, and those who will come in the future. Hiawatha D and Veronica have not only created this mural, but they have told us their story. They have also shared Veronica's experience as a student at Blaine and Hiawatha's experience as a parent at Blaine. I wanna thank them for their willingness to share their story with us. These beautiful personal gifts combined with the mural will be woven into the fabric of our school through an intentional integration into our arts curriculum. Their story will be told year after year and their legacy will be felt. Students will be invited into conversations about representation, white supremacy, systemic racism, and Black Lives Matter. This is a long overdue conversation that has just begun at Blaine and it needs to be ongoing. For many of us like myself who did not grow up talking about white supremacy and systemic racism, these conversations can be difficult, painful, messy, and filled with mistakes. In the time of this pandemic, one of the things that I tell my students over and over again is that we are all in this together. We will inevitably make mistakes as we learn and discuss, but dismantling racist policies that permeate our institutions and communities can only occur when we make a commitment to ongoing conversations and learning in our homes and in our schools and in our communities. Now, with this mural as a reminder in our school, we can honor Veronica and Hiawatha's story by doing the work to identify and oppose racism and white supremacy. It is my honor and joy 
to introduce artist and storyteller and Lane alum, Veronica Berry Davis. And hi. Hello, everyone. We are so excited that we are here. Super excited and super thankful for the school administration, for the PTA, and for the entire broad coalition of people who stepped up to support this really important project that opens up an incredible, amazing, and critical conversation that we have to have as a society with different people in it. Different, beautiful, amazing, powerful, brilliant people in it. And it's so special and so amazing to me that I got a chance to be here as an alum. And I got a chance to be here and come back here with my family. My beautiful husband, Hiawatha. Hiawatha D is his artist name. He was a parent here at Blaine. And I thought it was so cool that listening to all of the different stories that we've heard since we've engaged this project that when he was here as a parent, he was also involved and engaged in helping to create the first mural. Hiawatha creates powerful, amazing, wonderful, beautiful art that shows Black people in their most powerful, beautiful light. Can you imagine if someone told your story differently than your story actually is? Well, Hiawatha, in his career, has committed himself to telling Black stories, Black images, images that directly oppose a lot of the stories that we typically hear in this society. So in this story, this powerful healing mural story, I'd like to just share with you that we are here. We are here. I want to speak to those who maybe come to Blaine and don't, maybe they look like me, look like Hiawatha, look like our daughter, Angela, who's going to sing later. I want to share with you that you are powerful, that you are important, that your voice matters and your truth has the power to shift and change a nation. In that context, I also want to share with people who are not black, not brown, not a person of what we call color in our society, that this mural actually creates a conversation for us to have for generations to come. Will you please welcome my husband who's going to just share his heart and his thoughts around this beautiful piece that will sit as a backdrop, a powerful backdrop, a vibrant color, a powerful backdrop of vibrant pride in this community. Would you please help me welcome Hiawatha D, who labored over this wall to create an energy of love and light and liberation for all of us to have a conversation that yes, we are here. Thank you. Thank you, Blaine community. Uh, I'm honored to be here. It was, uh, I was excited to get started on this particular project. Uh, a moment ago, I was asked, what does this mean to me? And it, and it makes me think of Sankofa. For those of you that, that don't know what Sankofa is, it's, a, it's an African uh, statement uh, proverb that talks about think back and remember so you can move forward. Uh, like was said, I was a parent here about 10, 14 years ago, uh, 16 years ago actually. And so uh, 
coming back on the campus uh, in the area brings back a lot of fond memories. Uh, I, you know, gained a lot of friends here. My kids gained a lot of friends here and spent a lot of time up here in Magnolia. Um, so this is a Sankofa moment for me. Uh, it helps me remember uh, the past, but also create something to, to continue the future. Uh, you know, during this pandemic and the uprising, uh, we've all had a time to sit down and really think about what we're doing, how we do it, and, and what's going on in our world. And uh, we see that there's some things that need to be addressed and changed. Uh, so hopefully this mural that I created will help at least offer a starting point to change some of those attitudes and conversations. Uh, we are here uh, speaks to the fact that we are here and, and, and we will be here and everybody needs to be appreciated, right? Everybody needs to be celebrated. Uh, everybody needs a chance to see themselves. Um, I know for me, for my, for my kids who went here, um, the conversation has always been uh, it would be nice if I could see myself over there. Um, that's powerful. It, it speaks to a lot um, of positivity in one's attitude. Um, so hopefully, like I said, with this mural, um, we can all begin to, to, to think pos positively about all of our friends, all of our colleagues, all of our community members, right? And we can start to have those conversations. Yes, they're difficult, but they're necessary. We need to deal with what's going on uh, in a real uh, manner. Um, you know, my work speaks to, to positivity and power, um, being proud, um, and just letting, know, just letting you know, people know that uh, uh, it's good to be seen. It's important to be seen. So thank you again, Magnolia. And I, I offer you uh, this mural entitled we are here and before we offer the mural we just want to extend um, our heartfelt uh, gratitude to Ms. Pickens uh, for her dedication her courage and determination to boldly create sacred space for this story to be told I should we are here. We are here. Okay, yes, we're gonna make it through this. 
this, yes. We're gonna make it through this, yes. You are important, yes. You are a star, yes. You shine so bright, yes. So don't hide who you are, yes. Cause we are here. Your life matters. We are here. So don't give up. Oh. Don't hide your voice. Speak out.
couple questions that um, you guys may have. And, but before he answers those questions, I just wanted to say that this mural will actually, it's, it's not just a mural. It's a healing mural because we're actually going to use the mural to create sacred space for story time, not just with the students, but also with community. So look forward to that opportunity in the future. And Hiawatha is just going to answer a couple questions that Ms. Susie sent his way from students. So Hiawatha. Um, so uh, common questions of, of, of the style of work that I've created. Uh, the first question was, when did I start doing artwork? Uh, I actually started when I was about nine years old, uh, drawing all the time. And in high school, uh, 15, 16 is when I was uh, challenged to paint. And a uh, little bit of pushback on my end, but uh, lo and behold, I figured out I knew how to paint. And since the 10th grade, I've been painting pretty regularly, uh, you know, and then after high school, off to art school. Um, but yeah, so started at nine, advanced at around 16, and then really got involved uh, around the age of 25 or so when I turned professional. So a good 35 years I've been doing this work. Um, the other question is, uh, what did I think about or how did I design the mural what was I thinking about when I designed this particular mural? Um, so one of the things that I've learned being an artist, uh, uh, usually your first thought, your first creative thought is correct. Um, so when we sat down in February to talk about doing this piece, um, uh, I just took my design skills, my basic design skills and thought about what we had to begin with and to try to continue that and just move it forward. So the, the previous design was just a simple uh, outline of buildings and then the Seattle Center in the background. So I said, well, this is about, uh, you know, this is me as an artist uh, making a statement. So my statements are about black folks, right? Uh, this particular uh, presentation is to be a positive statement about uh, people of color, black people on this campus. So to me, it was one plus one equals two. I do a Seattle backdrop with the bright colors uh, to uh, instill, you know, good feelings and happiness. Uh, and then I add black folks, black people, uh, two groups, parents, and I, I guess you can say their parents and, and an older alumni, teenagers, maybe, and then you have some of the uh, younger students. So it was a no brainer to me. I just thought, uh, you know, a few people on the piece with a Seattle background, a colorful background uh, that invokes a, a good feeling. Uh, and then uh, because it's black people in, in Magnolia, uh, it, would, it would create an opportunity for a conversation. So that's how I came up with the design. Uh, and again, I know as an artist, good design is good design. So when I, when I did the first sketch, it was, you know, on the iPad about three inches by three inches. I could tell it was a good design. So, um, and then the last question that everybody always asks when they figure it out, how come I don't include facial features and some of the body parts like hands and feet? So, uh, my technique was to combine three uh, art techniques together, mainly is cubism, abstract, and surrealism. And, uh, and of course, perspective is the other little element there. But I know, if things are prospectively correct, you don't need all of the body parts to make a complete statement. And so that's what you see behind me. Are, you know what the people are doing, they're walking, they're uh, positioning themselves in a proud manner, right? They're dressed nice. Um, so uh, that's all that was needed to make this, this composition. Um, and that's basically why I don't always add facial features in, in, in some of the body parts uh, because the, the, the figure, is situated in a way where you can tell what it's doing is prospectively correct. So, and then, so for the face, the, the face is, and then, the, and then the last but least, the the, the faceless um, mm -hmm. idea is so everyone can see themselves in the image. It's not particular to one person. It's about all of us. And so, uh, I know. Um, 
you know, when I look at a piece of artwork or, or a photograph, if it looks like my auntie or, you know, a friend of mine, it, I don't really think about myself. But when I see something that doesn't have a face in it and it's doing something that we all do, then I think about myself. So then um, have non-black people been able to look at your pieces and see themselves? All, all, all the time. Um, again, we're all people. We all pretty much do the same thing. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. We all do the same thing. We all pretty much want the same thing. You know, good education, food to eat, nice place to stay, right? Um, and, and, and choices, right? So that's what I paint. Uh, and so we can all see those things. Yes. Okay. All right. And yes. then um, if you have any other questions, we just want to invite you to um, send those questions. I believe there's a document being created. Yes. And you'll hear more about that. And so oh, yeah. I, so I know I'll be uh, working with the art students. Uh, um, so that I don't know exactly when, but look forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so that's that's a good thing. Okay. And then as far as community questions, that will be for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, thanks again. Um, hopefully everybody is is uh, having a good uh, start to the new year. The new normal. I'll be in these circumstances yeah, the and normal. hopefully it's not the new normal. Well, hopefully we'll hopefully get past not. this and through this. Hopefully. I believe that we can do that together. Um, if we rally around, you know, the opportunity that we have to raise our consciousness around the fact that we are here, that black people are here, that brown people are here that you are here and sure. I am here and all of us together, what we could create together, the society that we could build Amazing. together. Um, wow, I'm, I'm just excited about what you will do as a student in the world to help shape this message and this narrative. We are here. here.